So I'm going to go over rapidly prototyping with Yeoman and Twitter Bootstrap. Uh, we're going to assume everything's installed and just dive right in. So the first thing we're going to do is Yeoman init, answer some questions. Do we want Twitter Bootstrap for Compass? No, we want just straight up CSS for now. Uh, we'll take the plugins. We're not worried about ECMAScript or AMD support. And then that'll generate uh, all of these files. We'll open them up in Sublime Text. And you can see there's an app directory and a test directory and some uh, configuration files all generated for you. Uh, our main page here is uh, the index.html. You can see uh, some great uh, conditional stuff for IE um, and just a lot of boilerplate that uh, would be a hassle to code up uh, yourself. Uh, and there's the Twitter Bootstrap uh, plugins that were loaded as well. Um, this is our main content so far right there. And in fact, if we go over here and type in Yeoman Server, it's going to fire that stuff up and open it up in our browser on port 3501. And it shows that we've got HTML5 and Twitter Bootstrap loaded. Uh, it's already pre-configured uh, live reload for you. Looks sweet. And if I just save that and come back over here, I haven't reloaded the page. And here's my changes. So let's go in here and uh, we're going to keep the container div. Um, oops. And we're going to uh, now see a blank page. We want to put a nav bar up. So we're going to try to rapidly put up a, a nav bar. I'm going to go silent here while I type for a second. Okay, so looking at these class names, these are just hooks that, uh, you know, standardized class names that Twitter Bootstrap uses, um, and by using them, uh, that'll trigger their CSS, and they've done a lot of work for you there. Um, as we'll see in a second, let me just finish this off. Um, I'm going to start with our brand. We're going to call this my site. And let's do a collapsible nav here. Come on, Rob, type. Okay. And we'll call this products. Typing is really bad today, sorry. Uh, what do we want to say? Products, services, about, uh, what else? Contact. Okay, that's decent. So let's look at what, what that generated. Well, it looks like our markup's in, but we don't really have any sexy styles yet. So what happened there is we, um, we told Yeoman we wanted the bootstrap CSS and we didn't want SAS, but um, it sets you up to where you'd be compiling all of your CSS uh, using preprocessors down to this main CSS uh, uh, page, uh, or rather script. So we just have to change this from main to the actual bootstrap we're using. I'm actually going to make this a little narrower. And voila, we have a nice little nav bar going. So it's a little sparse over here to the right. Let's stick a search, a little search form. And all we have to do for that is do our nav, uh, nav bar search.
in the class search hyphen query placeholder will just say search. Now if we save, so what did I do? This is not in my nav bar, so I've done something kooky. Yep, I put it uh, outside of my container. So let's fix that real quick. Okay. Now it's looking good. So there we have a pretty nice little nav bar going. Let's get some content in here. Um, so below our nav bar, I'm going to create a row. So now you'll see that uh, that Twitter Bootstrap uses a 12 unit grid. So you can just think of that as 12 units across. Um, and you can use a span of n to show how, to, to specify how wide you want your columns. So here's a uh, initial column, header call one, we'll call this, some text. And let's do another one over here and call that uh, header call two. And so conveniently got uh, six and six adds up to 12. And you can see that these are spanning uh, six units each. I could do some interesting stuff here. I can say that this is span three and given an offset of three. And you can see this span is now three units in the grid. And that space between these two is the offset. I'm going to go back to span six um, and look at this page. We're, we're going to um, take what we have here and, and stick a table on the left and a form on the right. So let's get that rolling quick. Um, table, the convention is to start with the class table. And um, let's see, we're going to start with a table header. Um, T head, and then um, let's just do foobar baz, good old foobar baz here. And then in our table body, we'll create some rows. Uh, so foo data here, bar data here, and some baz data over here, right? So now if we, re, if we save, we have our, our uh, new table. Um, let's, let's create some more rows to make it look a little more appealing. Um, so a nicely, respectably spaced, padded uh, initial table. Um, let's try to make this thing look like a data grid. Uh, if you've done this by hand before, um, you know, take good 20, 30 minutes at least to do this uh, using your own CSS. But if I say table stripe, table border, just that is going to give me sort of the appearance of a data grid. Um, if I want to make this hoverable, I can just say table uh, hover. And voila, you can see it change as I hover over it. Cool. Let's put the form over here on the right. Um, so we're going to go into our right column, which is span of six. And um, we're going to do a horizontal form. It's a hard one to spell right there. Um, horizontal forms require a little more verbosity. You basically need to remember to do control groups with uh, with controls. So let's see here in my control group, I want to do a label for a email. So this is a control label. Again, these are all Twitter Bootstrap naming conventions. Um, email. Actually, I need to um, I need to say that. This is for my email. So I'm going to give an input with an ID of my email. 
that'll connect the label to that guy. And it's a type text uh, placeholder is going to say email. Nothing surprising there. And if we save, if we come over here, you can see uh, you can see there's no padding. So I made a mistake here. Um, I, what I didn't do was wrap this guy, the input, in control. And this is actually kind of good because you'll see the difference uh, once this is done properly. Controls. Okay, so now you can see the pattern is just there. I mean, the padding is, is uh, there. And you've got a nice little label and input for free. Um, we probably have like a password and and a submit button. Well, let's do the submit button. Let's keep this short. Um, so we'll just steal this guy and we'll steal the control. All right. Uh, okay, and we'll do a button of type equals submit. Uh, log in, say. Right. So now, if we look at this, we've got a pretty generic looking button. Um, everything's lined up nicely, though. Uh, all we have to do here is say class equals btn, another naming convention for Twitter Bootstrap, and look at this. We've got a nice looking, respectable HTML5 button. So, pretty amazing if you look at this whole page that uh, we did this in something like 10 minutes or so. so uh, yeah, Yeoman and Twitter Bootstrap, pretty killer combination. We've just scratched the surface, um, but that's all we're going to do for this video. I hope you enjoyed.